All right, in this next video, we're gonna talk about a little bit more about potential energy curves. I've got one right here that's showing the relationship between potential energy and horizontal displacement or displacement in general. It doesn't have to be horizontal. It helps if you think of it that way because it kind of gives you this idea that it's a hill. Um, but before we continue, I want you to answer some questions, okay? I want you to figure out where the forces here in this potential energy curve are zero where the forces are positive, and where the forces are negative. So go ahead and pause your video real quick, answer those questions, and then I'll show you the answers once you play it again. Okay, so the forces are gonna be zero at any point where the derivative is zero. Remember that the negative derivative of potential energy is equal to the force. So here, 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 and here are all places where there's a zero slope, which means we have zero force acting. So those are kind of equilibrium points. Um, where the forces are positive would be places where we have a negative slope, so that there's a force pointing in the positive direction. So between one and two, between three and four. We have then negative forces where we have negative or positive slopes because we have forces pointing back in the negative direction. So four on and between two and three. Okay, so remember that these forces are resisting an object trying to gain potential energy. Okay, they always want to have the least potential energy possible. So they're trying to push the object into these low energy equilibrium point. So this place like two, and this place like three is where they want the particle to go. And we're gonna call those places um, potential energy wells, because those are kind of places where like a particle could get trapped, okay? So now we're gonna look at other ways we can use these potential energy graphs. And so we're gonna be looking at a particle with a mass of 0.1 kilogram that's located at this position of two meters and has at that point a velocity of four meters per second. Okay, and so the, in order to kind of understand what's gonna to happen to the particle, we wanna find out what the total mechanical energy acting on that particle is. Okay, well, mechanical energy is gonna be the sum of potential plus kinetic energy. Okay, Kinet potential energy we get just from reading the graph. Okay, so at this position of two meters, we have a potential energy of zero, zero joules. And then we can solve for the kinetic energy there. So we have the zero potential energy. We can substitute the 0.1 kilogram in for m and the four meters per second for v. And when you do, you're gonna get that the particle has about 0.8 joules of kinetic energy, okay? So that our total mechanical energy is equal to 0.8 joules, okay? Which means that this particle is essentially trapped right here. Since the particle has 0.8 joules, it can basically be anywhere where there is 0.8 joules of energy or less. Okay, now one of the things, challenges for this particle is that because it only has 0.8 energy of joules, it can only get up to here or up to here. It can't go anywhere else. Maybe there's a place over here that goes way down like this, and it could be located in that place, but it couldn't get there because it's got doesn't have enough energy to make it over that hill or that hill. We're gonna look at a second particle now. This one is located at a position of four meters it still has the mass of 0.1 kilograms, but this one at 0.4 meters has a velocity of seven meters per second. All right, so again, we'll look at its total energy, which would be potential plus kinetic. Okay, so we can read its potential energy at four meters. It would have a potential energy of one joule. Okay, and now we want to find our kinetic energy, 
So 1 half mv squared. After we substitute in the mass and the velocity, we find that the total kinetic energy at that point would be 2.45, we'll just round it 2.5 joules. So that means that our total energy for the particle is equal to 3.5 joules. This means that our particle can be anywhere within this region. We can't make it up here because it doesn't have enough energy to get there. We can't make it up here because it doesn't have any energy to get there, but it can go in between oops, these places right here. Okay, so again, if you thought of it as like a roller coaster, it could start here and go through to there, but it would come to a stop at these points because those are the places where all of its energy is in the form of potential energy. We're going to go ahead and go through and kind of show the energy of the particle at a couple different points now. So at this position right here, we have a potential energy of 4, or sorry, of 3.5, and a kinetic energy then of 0. Okay, at this point right here, we have 0 potential energy, which means that all the energy is kinetic, so we have 3.5 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, at this point right here, our potential is equal to 3 joules, which means that there are 0.5 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, down here is what we just found, kind of used to figure out the energy of the particle, where we have 1 joule of potential and 2.5 joules of kinetic. And finally, we get back to the top right here, the highest point we can go, where we have, again, 3.5 joules of potential energy and no kinetic energy. So remember that kinetic energy is the energy of motion, energy of having velocity. And so that means that when it gets to these points right here, would have zero kinetic energy, it comes to a stop. That's why it doesn't go any further. It doesn't have enough energy to get further. Okay, and you see as it gets lower down, decreasing its potential energy, that kinetic energy increases, and it maxes out at the bottom here. Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna decrease here as potential energy increases, and then that potential energy is gonna transform back into kinetic energy down here. Okay, and so we have kind of these places of higher kinetic energy where it's moving faster in these places of lower kinetic energy where it's moving slower. I, I mentioned that you could call this a potential energy well because it's basically a place where a particle could get trapped. You might hear if you um, took chemistry um, often you'll talk about different kinds of reactions and you might look at potential energy charts to look at why you have different kinds of reactions and why you have kind of like an initial energy required to cause a reaction to happen, but then how suddenly a whole bunch of energy is released after that happens.